Did it's it pretty cool. used to be called 12 Monkeys comics and games, maybe? <laughs> and now there's infinite of called, them? I got it. It was called Matrix Games. I'm so sorry Matrix. for anyone who's here, who's anyone who's watching who's familiar with Matrix Games, but they changed the name to Infinite Monkey okay. Comics and Games, and he is running that store now. So it's good to see him back. Obviously, we're all familiar with Todd, and it looks like we're underway. Okay, here we go. Todd Anderson's leading with the Godless Shrine and the Doomed Traveler. Junk Aristocrats loves these creatures that you can sacrifice for value. Yeah, I mean, Brad is the biggest fan of Doom Traveler and Young Wolf, and it's kind of what makes this deck start to go. Obviously, you know, it's not a, it's not an experiment one or anything busty and flashy like a Champion of the Parish to start the game, but it's all part of the plan with this deck, all the synergies that really make this deck go, is you're going to oh. see Young Wolf now. Yeah, I mean, these cards, I remember playing with these cards in Limited, and sometimes, you know, Young Wolf might not make the cut in your Limited deck. But here it is at the 1-0 table. Charles Baker, meanwhile leading with an overgrown tomb into stomping ground, so he doesn't have much action on the first couple of turns. Todd's going to crash in for two. Mm. Yeah, oh, there you go. So he's got Varls, too. So one of the things with the Jun deck is, you know, when they don't start off with a Farseek on turn two, they play a very, very fair game, and it looks like Charles is playing a ridiculously fair game. Now, as you've seen in hand, he has, like, a Thrag, Tosca, Hot Mash, the Fells, and a Putrefy. Putrefy looking horrible on this board currently. Yeah. Uh, there's two creatures that basically come back, undying and leaving a token behind, and Varals can regenerate. Yeah, without that Farseek, I mean, the, the keys to the Jun deck, Huntmaster, the Fells, Olivia, you want to hit those four drops on turn three, and a Thrag Tusk on turn four. So, Charlie's certainly going to have something on turn four, since he has not had a play here yet. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be so, I'm a little surprised that he just takes the damage right now. He goes down to 13, and then Todd's going to play a Blood Artist. So maybe Got to respond. Yeah, I think you, you probably have to respond here. You, know, you, you can't regenerate off of Putrefy, so I think you just fire it off towards the Varls, but he doesn't even do that, so I'm a little bit surprised. Maybe he just wants to take out the Blood Artist? Okay, sure. Okay. So he's going to have to take a damage to do that, move down to 12. Todd's going to move up to 19. But he's got a... Charlie's got some, some serious catching up to do. I hope hopefully he has a fourth land for the hunt match of the fellas. Here we go. What are we gonna see here? Huntmaster, Olivia. Could also have well, he's got Garrick Primal Hunter, but no relentless, it looks like. And there's so the Huntmaster. So it's gonna be Huntmaster, it's gonna be a wolf token, he's gonna move up to 14. I mean, I guess that's gonna allow him to play some defense at this point. It's pretty nice that he has gotten Blood Artist off the table, too, with that Putrefy last turn. So, he's doing okay. He's trying to come back. As Todd looks like he's going to sacrifice Doom Travel, but he has Spear Token into play to Varls. Maybe start scavenging and start going up in the air. Yeah, Todd's going to make a 1-1 Flying Spear Token here. And then most likely his plan... Okay. So he wanted to get the Morbid for Tragic Slip. And he's going to upgrade his Young Wolf to a 2-2. To an Old Wolf. To an... Uh, to a slightly grizzled wolf, let's say, or rune clawed. And he's probably going to scavenge here the uh, Doom Traveler onto his spirit or to his wolf. We'll put on to the wolf, wolf so it can crash through the other wolf. I guess that makes sense. Now you're going to see him play another Doom Traveler. And yeah, happy, happy with these attacks. You kind of see all the all the synergy in the Junk Aristocrat stack, like right now, playing out. All the different things it can do. Like, again, yeah, it doesn't do anything insane, but it just all works together. Yeah, Varals is a is a reasonably fair card, I would say, but all of the pieces really fit together here. He, the sacrificing creatures to get value out of them and then scavenging them is very, very useful, and especially in, th in this deck where you have multiple morbid effects. I saw Charlie drew a Mizium Orders for the turn, but Thragtos is going to do what it always does, which is try to stabilize the board. Charlie's going to move up to 16 and pass it back. So now maybe the choice to put the scavenge counter on the wolf instead of the spirit is going to is gonna cost Todd here because that 3-3 three, three wolf can only trade with the Thrive Tusk and leave a beast behind. It doesn't look nearly as good. I think Todd drew another Doom Traveler. And he chose not to sacrifice the other Doom Traveler. Yeah, I thought we might see that because we saw that the previous turn. Is that it looked like he wanted to go in the air, and you see him sacrificing. So now he does now. it. Now, yeah. What is he? So he wants to scavenge somewhere here. Maybe scavenge onto the Varal, so that will also trade. 
With the Thrag Tusk? Yeah, okay. And it does have that regeneration shield from the sacrifice. All right, so here come these guys. And I kind of like this. I mean, I think Charlie is going to like immediately just trade the Thrag Tusk with a, with a young wolf. Yeah. Yeah. He has to. He's going to get his beast token, and he's going to end up taking... Uh, two, three, he's going to take a four to go down to 12. But I, I think that, you know, he's doing a pretty nice job of stabilizing again with a draw that did not include Farseek. You know, he needed to, he needed to have Huntmaster and Thragtusk, and he did. So I think he's doing pretty good. And you said he has that Mizium Mortars. That's going to be key in this matchup here. I mean, it's, it can't clear the board completely because Todd can regenerate. He has a Doom Traveler. But it, clearing out those spare tokens is going to be very important, especially if he does not have a, an Olivia for air defense. Yeah, the big question is, does he have the third red? And he doesn't right now, so he's going to play Cavern of Souls. We'll see what it's going to name, and it looks like yeah, he's got Olivia and a ground seal in his hand. So you're saying you can't name Cavern of Souls on uh, instant? Not yet. Sorceries? G give, give us time. Okay. I'm sure there'll be a land like that Tri soon Tribal? But he does have the Olivia, so... He has enough mana to ping, he can take out one of the spirits, block the other one. So Todd has to put the brakes on here, probably. Especially because we drew a Woodland Cemetery last turn. There's not a ton that he can really do in this in, like, in this particular game state. This is where Olivia kind of reigns supreme, as it often does. It, if you cannot get Olivia Voldaren off the board, her two abilities, you know, red and one, deal one damage to target creature, can take out the token army. All right, Todd's coming in with a 4-4, and Charles chump blocks. And actually, I, I actually kind of like that, just like keeping, yeah. and just now keeping he can, the life a little high. And he can ping now to force the regenerate, and more importantly, it makes Varol's into a vampire, so now he can steal it next yep. turn. So you see Todd kind of considering his options. He's going to sacrifice that creature to regenerate it. But Olivia is going to get a little bit bigger. So if Charlie had shot in the token, had shot in one of the tokens, you know, Todd, Todd sacrifices the token. Sure, yeah. So I actually like that play a lot. And I think I, I think you bring up the, the thing that's the most important is that now that Varals is a vampire, now things that definitely change because th that's the, the one thing that Todd kind of has going for him is that Varals is, you know, kind of trying to dominate this board a little bit. As you guys see Olivia Old Aaron on the screen, Varel's not going to be able to do that anymore if Charlie decides that he wants to take it. And very key here, Varel's sacrifice ability is sacrifice another creature. It's not come into play very often, but you cannot self-sacrifice to dodge the, uh, the control-taking ability from Olivia. And Charlie attacks Olivia and just passes the turn back, basically daring Todd to do his worst. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the worst can, is. Yeah, I don't know the worst thing he can do. Uh, I mean, sacrifice a creature, tragic slip is probably the worst damage you can do here. And before Todd even gets to attack, Charlie says, before your attackers, take your Varals, so no spirit token's going to come across. Sure, yeah, and take, take says, one, that's yeah, fine. Charlie says, all right, I'll take one and pass the turn back. And I think Todd knows that he's in some serious trouble here, because if you don't deal with Olivia, like within the first, like the, the, the first or second turn that it's in play, that means you obviously don't have an answer and the damage is already going to be done. Right, Un untapping with Olivia, and especially because Charles had the six mana, so he could actually get the ping in, mm -hmm. along with casting Olivia, was a great tempo play for him there. And now Todd's kind of up, up the paddle, up the creek without the paddle. He's thinking over his options. Here comes a 4-4 Olivia and a 4-4 Varals. I mean, you, talk, you saw Todd reach for the Doom Traveler. He's like, do I consider blocking? What does blocking even really accomplish me, for me right now, which is not a ton? And now Charlie has a Thragtus to follow up. So now he's got a better board position, the best things on the board, and he's at a healthy life total. And Todd draws another land. He's going to pick him up. So Charlie Baker's going to win game one. Wow. Pretty dominant, actually. Without without a far seek, I think that's like the best draw that he could probably have. Um, he starts on a, with, with a Putrefy into... Putrefy to take care of the Blood Artist into the Hunt Master and the Thraxos into Olivia plus a shot. That's, yeah, I, I, that's, that's, I think that's what he's looking for if it's not a Farsi draw. That's four ideal turns right there. Yeah. Minus but, the Farsi. And if you have the Farsi, you can just kind of accelerate your plan yes. by a turn. So we're going to take the sideboards here. Uh, we'll go over Tots first because he is going to be on the play. There are four Abrupt Decays, three Intangible Virtues, two Duress, one Sin Collector, one War Priest of Thune, two Soren Lord of Innistrad, and two Unflinching Courage. 
So, I mean, I don't know if that's good enough in this matchup. I mean, you, looking at these cards, the, the, you know, what I always do when I'm looking side, over sideboards, excuse me, is like what kind of cards stand out in their particular matchups. You know, Tandem of Virtue is, is fine here, but it's not great. Yeah. Um, Duress, kind of the same, where like you kind of want to board in Duress to take care of their removal spells, but the cards that are actually really good against you are the creatures, like Olivia, yeah, yeah. like a Thrax Husk. So, I mean, I don't think that Duress is great. Same can be said for Sin Collector, as far as that category goes. And then Soren Lord of Innistrad is okay, but it depends on how many bonfire-type effects that Charlie has in his deck. And he has three of them in his main deck, which, of course, Todd doesn't know, but we do. So I don't even think Soren's that great. And at the end of the day, I don't think any of the cards that Todd has access to are great here. Yeah, he's got... Charlie's got three bonfires and two Mizium Mortars, so he can clear out token armies. The bonfires can deal damage to the... Planeswalkers. What I like to look at in sideboarding, Cedric, is what just happened to that game? What what kind of dominated? And it was Olivia. Yes. And Todd does not really have an answer to that in his sideboard. He can bring in more removal and abrupt decays, but they don't deal with Olivia. All yep. he really has is the four tragic slips in his main deck. I mean, you look at Charlie's deck list, the only thing that Abrupt Decay actually deals with is a flip Hunt Master of the Fells, and you're certainly not going to bring in Abrupt Decay for that. No. So, I mean, those are going to stay on the bench, and, I mean, those four tragic slips that Todd has in his main deck they're going to be working overtime. And we saw the first Tragic Slip actually take care of Hunt Master of the Fells, which is obviously a good target. It You're was. happy to kill it, but then, you know, the, the Olivia that comes down two turns later is the actual problem, and then Todd doesn't draw another Tragic Slip, and he just gets just beaten up and eaten alive by Olivia Boulder, which, to be fair, is not the first time we've seen that here. That's true. So let's see what Charles has in his sideboard. He has a bunch of two ofs in Vampire Nighthawk, Acidic Slime, Pillar of Flame, Liliana the Veil, Slaughter Games. What appeals to you here? I mean, Pillar of Flame is the big one that stands out. Vampire Nighthawk isn't terrible either. Uh, Cynic Slime, I think the matchup isn't really about mana denial. Todd's deck has 24 mana sources. He only needs about in between 3 to 5 to, to operate, so I don't like that plan. Uh, Liliana, really bad against him. Slaughter Games, that is also really bad. So I think, you know, of the two ofs, Pillar of Flame is going to come in. And then he's got these bevy of one ofs. Yeah, some interesting ones. A Singleton Braska the Unseen, the Green Black Planeswalker. A Dead Bridge Chant. Yeah, more for the Jundabir. Ground Seal, Gaze of Granite, and Tragic Slip. Gaze of Granite certainly isn't a bad one, a Singleton to bring in. Why yeah, is that? It's, a, it's an interesting one. I think it's perfectly reasonable to bring that in. I don't think it's going to be great, but I think it's better than some of the other options he has. Again, like, I, I don't love a card. Like, he only has one Liliana the Veil in his main deck, so, you know, that can probably go. He, uh, Charles has three Sire of Insanities in his main deck, and the game's never really going to get to that point where I think Sire is his all-star, because all, all of Todd's cards are just going to come onto the board immediately. Yeah. So, you know, those three can go. And then we're looking at, like, two Pillar Flames coming in, maybe, like, the Gaze and then the additional Tragic Slip and just calling it a day. Pillar yeah. Flame is going to be real good. We want to take care of those High Priests. And in the background, we see Jeff Hoogland just wrapped up his feature match. He's carrying the Slip, which usually means he's the winner. Unless he's good, unless he's just super nice. He's guy. a real nice guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I lost. I'll bring it up. No big deal. Okay, so Todd Anderson lost game one. He's on the play here. Leads with isolated chapel. So we've got Charlie just just playing in Woodland Cemetery. So we have a quick update for you guys. Jerry on to Jerry Thompson on to game number three. So if we're able to cut to that, we will. Depending on how this does go. And Todd's got the turn two Doom Traveler yeah. off of those isolated chapels. He's got the Buddy Land draw. Buddy, buddy. Doom Travelers are coming in. Here's and a duress. duress. Now let's take a look. I would like to see your hand. And this is one of the things that I felt could happen. Yeah, that's a whiff. Swing and a miss. And see the thing, like if you're if you're if you're looking at Charlie's hand, Charles's hand right now, excuse me, you see his hand. He has a Thrax Husk, he has Live Builder, and he has a Thunder Hell Fight and lands. And it's like, well, that hand's, you know, if you're duressing, you're like, man, your hand is like kind of bad or it's kind of slow. But Todd's deck isn't the kind of deck that can really punish him for having that slow of a draw. You know, that's the big thing. It's like that this deck doesn't really, you know, deal a lot of damage quickly, like a like a red green aggro deck or, so, or like a Naya deck or anything like that. So him having this slow hand isn't really like a big punishment or anything. But here's Todd with the High Priest. So this is one of the draws where he can get out a little bit faster here if he has some kind of sacrifice outlet. And apparently he doesn't. He crashes in with the Scurry Dad High Priest and the Doom Traveler. And he's got, does he have no, no play on turn four for Todd Anderson? 
it looks like a hand of two tragic slips, which are very important to being able to take care of Olivia, but he needs to find a sacrifice outlet in a Varls or a Cartel Aristocrat like right now because Olivia has shown up and it's important to get this thing off the table and Sun Petal Grove is the draw for Todd. And that's not going to do it. He, uh, he needed that sacrifice outlet. He has the Doom Traveler so he could play a creature, sacrifice Doom Traveler, activate the High Priest, and then tragic slip. But, but to no avail, Todd has to let Charles untap with Olivia Voldarin. And you have to think that that's big trouble for Todd Anderson. Charles looking at his hand, he's going to play a Woodland Cemetery. And just going to go yeah. aggro. All right, so he just I wants to get it. this game over with. And you I say you like that a lot. Oh, I love to attack. My favorite thing to do in Magic is to attack. <laughs> and here we go. Just like swing in for eight. Let's do it. Let's finish this off. Even, I mean, even if Todd can get his engine going, he's on his back foot. Charles clearly now knows that the coast is clear for things. Todd has drawn his intangible virtue. Yes. And what I think we're actually going to see here, Freaky, is we might see a tragic slip targeting his Doom Traveler, and then the other tragic slip targeting something else, which is not ideal, to say the least. But that's why you might, that's why you kind of see Todd pause a little bit, because, you know, he. He needed to draw a creature or a sacrifice outlet over the over the past two turns, and he's yeah. not drawn one yet. And because so, as even you said, if he's in a world of trouble right now, even if he goes with the tragic slip play, he doesn't have enough creatures to activate the high priest. Yes. So now we're gonna see Charles play a Cassid Wolf run, tapping some lands. He's gonna shoot high priest number one. Shoot it twice. This is this is awesome for Todd. This is like so ideal. Now, yeah, now he doesn't. Now he can use both tragic slips yeah. here on those creatures. Yeah, this worked out absolutely great. So now tragic slip number one, going to take down Olivia. We're probably going to see a shot on the Doom Traveler, which you know he thought about it, but then it just gives him a two-two. So Charles doesn't do that. Tragic number two takes care of Thunderball Hellkite, and all right, Todd's doing a little bit wow. better now. That was that was a very good turn of events for Todd Anderson. Yeah. So now a lingering salt and flashback. Oh, All right, we're turning this game around. One, so now two, here come your spirit tokens. One, two, three, four, two, two spirit tokens with vigilance off of that lingering salt. Now I think Charlie. Okay, so I think Charlie does have busy mortars in his hand, and he can't overload it. So the question now is, does he want to establish Thraktos first, or does he want to overload Missy mortars? He wants to establish Thraktos first, obviously. He's going to play that and gain five life. Let's see what Todd can draw. Draws Voice of Resurgence. I'm gonna get Charlie for eight and play play the deer elemental. I call it the moose. <laughs> the moose is loose. And people have pointed out to me that moose have uh, wider antlers oh, whatever. than deer. Uh, this is here we go. Yeah. Overloaded. Mizium orders. It's gonna deal four damage to all of Todd's creatures. But Todd is left with the 1-1 one, one Spear token from the Doom Traveler and the Star Star Elemental token from Voice of Resurgence, currently a 2-2. Two, two. And now we see some more aggression here from Charles. He could hold back. And, and they are both larger, actually, because of Intangible Virtue. So yeah. he could trade the Elemental token for Thrag Tusk here. So you see Todd wants him to spread his lands. I think he wants to know how much Hesed Wolfron could be active for next turn. And I think that may weigh into his decision for, for blocking this turn, because if he doesn't block this turn, then you've got a huge Wolfron activation on Thraktos next turn. Right, he's, he's potentially dead next turn to the Wolfron. Yeah, and you see Todd he's actually doing the, doing the math, yeah, with this pen and his paper. And I, you know, ideally for him, he does not want to have to trade his elemental token here for this. And also, the other thing here, too, Ricky, is you know, does he realize that the elemental token is a 3-3 and not a 2-2? Two -two? Because he might have to think that he maybe has a double, double block where yeah. he doesn't have to. All right, so here's a far save. So this is even a bigger Cats of Wolf for an activation next turn. Yeah, so Todd takes that 5 damage from Drag Dust. Another virtue. Ooh. Well, okay. But, okay, so they have Vigilance. He's going to attack for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep. Puts Charles to four. 
Just man, vigilant. He's still got the blockers. So this Wolfren activation is for... How much damage is that? Let's let's spread those lands out. Wolfron. Potentially 7 if he plays a land. So Ooh. yeah, so 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 minus some number of blockers. I mean, Ty can definitely live through this turn. Just 12 minus, this is 7. Yeah, 12 minus 7 is 5. Yeah, so no, he Gotta can't. crash in. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yep. You see the big rule for an activation? He needed to have a land to make it exactly enough. Which Charles did, and so that makes him victorious. Wow, so that game, that we saw some big swings there. Yes. We thought that Charles had a huge early advantage when when Todd did not draw his sacrifice outlets. He led with Olivia Voldarin into Thundermaw Hellkite and just went for the throat. But Todd was able to clear the board with two tragic slips yeah. when Olivia Voldarin went to town. And then follow up with Lingering Souls tokens. And then we thought Todd had the advantage. Yeah. And then Charles turned it around with Mizzy Mortars with one of his five board sweepers. Yeah, which is which is what Mizzy Mortars is uh, known to do. And we saw one of the big things, too, again, is, you know, I, I feel like Todd felt like he needed to board in duress. And so he boards in duress, it, it misses. And then, you know, those three creatures that Charles has in his hand in Thunderball, Hellkite, Olivia Voldaren, and Thraxos were the ones that actually end up beating him. Yes, the. Uh, the Missing Mortars was good in a timely top deck, but you know, again, he has multiple board sweepers and ways to clear the board, as we mentioned. Yeah. 